Hello and welcome to my screencast. Um, my name is Tyler. I'm going to be guiding you through a step-by-step -step tutorial today. Um, thank you Mr. Coronado for this amazing project. I'm absolutely loving it right now. Um, take 36 give or take. I'm gonna be ready for a beer after this. Um, <laughs> Let's see. Um, so really, this tutorial is just going to be based um, solely upon um, some basic design techniques and using different elements like type, texture, and um, imagery to create something dynamic. And um, I'm going to try and do that in a short amount of time. And hopefully I won't bore the hell out of you in the process. So, um, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to start out by opening Adobe Illustrator, which is what we're going to be working in solely today. Um, I already have that ready to go, so you don't have to watch the opening sequence of that. We're going to go up to File and create a new document. I'm going to title this Solo, which will make sense in a little bit. Um, basically setting up uh, your new document if you're new to Illustrator is um, fairly simple and straightforward. All your options are in here. The advanced button usually isn't clicked but it is for me. Um, and this is where you're going to choose what kind of um, uh, work you're going to be producing. And so what we're going to be doing is using some basic RGB um, for web not solely I'm gonna set it up so we can print it as well but um, I'm gonna go up to the um, document profile select basic RGB differences is units I'm going to use inches today just because it's basic if you're gonna be doing something something for the web I would uh, highly recommend pixels because that's the standard uh, measurement unit used in web design. Um, I'm not going to mess too much with the width and the height. It's um, basic letterhead size, but um, I am going to use the horizontal um, option here. No bleed today, sorry. I'm going to set it up, up with uh, two artboards. Um, we're going to have a couple options I'm going to show you. Um, and I'm going to use some high resolution imagery so I'm going to select um, a th high 300 ppi raster effect and again the RGB which um, is going to maintain a better screen um, um, level of color that's going to be more accurate. If I was going to be printing I would use CMYK sometimes. That's a longer story and I'll get into that on another day when I want to do 37 takes on a screen test. Um, okay, so select OK. We open our new document. Um, here are our two artboards we set up at horizontal. Um, just to show you, I'm going to go up to window and um, select, um, or sorry, view and rulers, show rulers. So now uh, we have a measurement system if, if you want to work with a grid um, or have more of a precise um, um, measuring option. Okay, so um, first board. Um, I have some presets, uh, vectors, images, so on, um, all ready to go in a separate folder. I'm going to open first my flock of birds. Um, and this is a basic rendered and expanded um, vector image of birds uh, with a black fill. These are grouped if you would like to and are new to this. Um, I can't go through the whole vector tutorial but um, when you're working with uh, groups uh, usually uh, you're gonna wanna be able to have the option to ungroup them so that's under object ungroup and just uh, keep my selection tool down and just for um, example ungrouping them I can move certain pieces around to my liking um, I'll keep this just for the sake of uh, this tutorial but um, you can always um, 
control Z and move everything back to the way it was. Um, and so now I do want to keep them grouped. So I'm going to use my selection key, create a bounding box around them. They're all selected. Object, group, good. Now we're going to go edit, cut, and we're going to bring this into our first board. So now you're going to go edit, and I'm going to paste in front, and that's important, and I'll show you why in a second. Um, working outside the lines is not a problem, but I'll scale these down just for the occasion. Okay, we have our first element. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the T over here, or you can simply type T for your uh, type tool. I'm going to hold down left on my mouse and scale out so I have some room to type. I'm going to type SOLO, all caps. Um, this is the same as the uh, document we set up. Um, uh, so now I'm going to select a, a larger size just to look at it. I'm then going to select bold and this is a Myriad Pro typeface. Okay, now um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this to my liking and because we are going to use this type as the main foundation for our mask I want to get it as close in as I can so you can see these changing and moving around here um, I'm changing the kerning on that by simply holding down alt and using my arrow keys I'm gonna squish these in so we can get about as much um, room as possible to, to have a better um, amount of imagery that's gonna show through that um, that'll become apparent in a second okay so that's all selected I'm ready to go um, now I want to change this from an editable type to an actual um, vector image um, and technically it's an object but uh, image object whatever um, you want to go to your type after you have it selected and let's see sorry I need my selection tool so I'm just reselecting it with the selection tool I had my type tools on still excuse me so go back up to type it doesn't have to be you know blacked out or anything create outlines and now we have created an object out of type this is no longer a functioning editing type object it is a uh, vector image or object now that is solid um, okay so object and I wanna group this um, it should be grouped anyways but I just wanna make sure okay um, and then I'm going to bring over these birds on top of it to create a little bit of aesthetic effect and I'm holding shift to make sure that um, um, as I'm changing the size of the birds bounding box they're not going to be stretched or pulled so if I didn't hold shift they would look all awkward and and weird and we don't want that uh, I'm gonna kinda bump these up so that their flight path is a little bit more um, slanted okay so we're good there alright so now um, this is where it becomes important where the birds were placed in front um, I'm gonna make sure they're still in front here so I'm gonna select object arrange bring to front that is because what we're gonna do right now is select both the type and the birds together and we're going to go up to object and create a compound path so compound path make you're gonna see some changes here where um, um, this has now been structured and fused together so to speak however what was black on black will now um, be changed and reversed so where the birds were black on the black type they've been knocked out um, and this is just kind of a cool effect um, 
but it gets even better when we are gonna bring in our image and show what this actually does when we wanna um, either mask it or place it over something else so I'm gonna bring in an image and that's uh, file place and I'm going to go to my pre-selected folder, select images, look at the thumbnails, and I'm going to select this bad boy. So when you're placing an image, always make sure to embed it, or it can get lost when you do file saves and stuff. Um, again, shift and drag for your uh, image adjustments. I'm going to place this in the center. And so the, for the first part, I'm going to um, select our object and bring it over here, scale it down. Okay, so it's outlined. That means because the image was placed, it was just placed above. So what you do, you keep this selected, object, arrange, bring to front, and we're good. And now you can see um, where that... Um, compound path was made that white negative now becomes transparent and knocked out so the background is actually showing now in all these places through so those bird shapes their negative space now um, becomes filled with the background image um, uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, enhance this a little bit. It kind of looks cool right now, um, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select our object, and then we're going to play with uh, some blending modes. So I have my transparency box open already. If you need, go to Window and um, select Transparency. Mine's already selected, um, and that'll bring up this transparency box. Here are all our blending mode options, uh, normal to luma luminosity. Um, I've worked with a lot of blending modes, and personally, I like overlay for this. Um, it's nice, soft, and um, just enhances some things. So we're just going to kind of bleed this into the um, sky a little bit. Not too crazy, but enough to where it just gives it a little kick. So as you can see, the blending mode has changed um, our object into something that has now become a little radiant and set back a little bit more into the sky. Okay, um, option one, done. Now we're going to mask this. Uh, it's going to be quick, but uh, it gives it a cool effect and just gives you more options. Uh, click and drag with the Alt key and Shift down. Okay. We're going to copy that, and now I'm going to copy the image that we're going to mask with. Click and drag that. Um, and actually, it, uh, take care of the opacity. I'm going to turn that off. Excuse me for that. Um, okay, now we're going to shift click um, and copy, or not copy, but um, select both uh, the image and the type. And now I'm going to go to Object, Clipping Mask, Make. All right, this is basically warning me that the the vector is pretty um, pretty crazy and uh, complex. So sometimes it doesn't work. Um, I believe it's going to work. So yes, and this is what we have. Um, version and option two of what we have created um, to see the um, the mass change. We can go into um, uh, isolation mode by double clicking and now I have the option of um, changing the image size within that mask which will completely alter and change how things can appear and look and so on and I kinda wanna get that boy uh, the solo man himself in there and that's about good. Click out of that. Double click to get out of isolation mode. And I'm just going to make this a little bigger. So you can see it's a little pixelated, but whatever. And there we go. There you have it. Um, so uh, yeah, 
two examples of what you can do with uh, some basic techniques. I hope you enjoyed this, and Ian, you better give me an A.